What's up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. Now, we know that Huawei is a huge competitor to Apple when it comes to the smartphone world, but with their introduction of the MateBook lineup of laptops, they're certainly now targeting Apple when it comes to the MacBook side of things. And with the introduction of the new Air and 2018 Pro, I've been testing out the X Pro MateBook from Huawei for a couple of weeks now. And even though from a design perspective, this is purely a copy of what you're going to get from the new generation MacBook PCs, but there's some things that the MateBook does really well that I wish Apple kind of followed in Huawei's footsteps. Firstly, when it comes to displays, uh, the design of the MateBook is absolutely beautiful. It has a 91% screen to body ratio and probably the thinnest bezels I've ever seen on any notebook PC. In fact, the bezels are so thin that there's actually no room for a webcam. Thus, there's a little pop-up webcam built on top of the keyboard, which is definitely Definitely an innovative solution uh, to this ultra low profile display. And even though uh, dimensionally all three of these PCs are pretty much around 30 centimeters by 21 centimeters, the MateBook actually has a slightly larger display because of those thinner bezels at 13.9 inches compared to the MacBook's 13.3 inches. Now the MacBook Air and Pro still have the MateBook beat in terms of overall thickness, although Huawei specifies that the uh, thickest point is actually 14.6 millimeters, what they don't factor in is actually the standing height included with the feet, which is actually close to 17 millimeters. On the MacBook Air, we're looking at only 15.6 millimeters, and the Pro is even thinner at around 14.9 millimeters. Now, the ultra low profile keyboard that we have on the current generation MacBooks are also fairly problematic for a lot of folks out there. Huawei, on the other hand, went back to basics by having a very simple, plain, chiclet style keyboard. It feels exactly the same as the older generation a MacBook Air, which is definitely a plus side. Now all three trackpads are the exact same dimension, which is awesome, uh, but the new force touch trackpad that we have on the MacBooks feel a little bit more responsive, especially for multi-touch commands, and I like the, the force touch or third click functionality that you get with them versus the older mechanical style trackpad that we have on the Huawei. Feels a little bit clunky and dated and feels very similar to, again, the older generation MacBook computers. Now coming back to the displays, in terms of actual resolution, the Huawei also has the MacBooks be over here. Native resolution of 3000 by 2000 has the highest pixel density count of about 260 ppi versus 227 ppi on the MacBooks which have the same exact dimension and native resolution. Now I would say that all three displays in terms of clarity, color rendition look really great. There's not really a major difference between the two besides the pixel density but in terms of sheer brightness one of the weaknesses of the Air is definitely that it's not bright. Uh, the display is only rated around 200 30 nits versus you're looking at 500 on the MacBook Pro and around 450 nits on the MateBook X Pro. Additionally, since Windows is a touch-enabled OS, there's also a 10-point capacitive touchscreen built into the Huawei display, which uh, some people may or may not find useful. Now, moving on, another problem with the new generation MacBooks is definitely connectivity. And although you can adapt USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 into any sort of connection you want, you still have to deal with adapters and it would be just nice to have just one USB type A connector, which is exactly what you have on the Huawei. You have a normal USB C connection, a Thunderbolt 3 connection, and a USB type A 3.0 port, which is a nice little convenience thing for people that use thumbsticks or want to connect to any kind of USB peripheral device, which a lot of people still have the need for. Now, performance wise, the MateBook X Pro competes more with the MacBook Pro than it does with the Air. Similarly, both have quad core Core i5 and Core i7 options available for processors. So in our instance, we have the Core i5-8250U on the Huawei, which is a uh, quad-core CPU with eight threads uh, that can turbo up to 3.4 gigahertz. The 2018 Air only comes with one CPU option, which is a Core i5 dual-core chip with four threads. It can turbo up to 3.6 gigahertz. And our MacBook Pro with the touch bar has the 8259U processor, has also four cores and eight threads like the Huawei, but it has a higher uh, uh, turbo frequency of 3.8 gigahertz. And if you take a look at our benchmark results on Cinebench, with that higher frequency, the MacBook Pro is getting the better higher score at 702 points versus 538 points on the Huawei. And uh, both are uh, extremely faster than the Air, which is only getting about 287 points. The same results are kind of mirrored if you take a look at our Geekbench results, where we're getting around 16,000 points on our multi-core score on uh, the uh, MacBook Pro versus 
is you're looking at about 13,000 points on the multi-core performance on the Huawei and only 7,800 points on the Air. Lastly, if we take a look at the battery specs, uh, in terms of capacity, we have a 58 watt hour battery on the Pro, a 50.3 watt hour battery on the Air, and the Huawei has a 57.4 watt hour battery. Now, based on our uh, video playback endurance test, we got the longest run time of about uh, 11 hours, 17 minutes on the Air. Second was the MacBook Pro, which wasn't far behind at 10 hours, 56 minutes. And the MateBook X Pro in the same exact scenario, we got around 9 hours, 13 minutes. So even though it has a very similar overall capacity and size to the MacBook Pro, we're getting a shorter runtime in this particular test. But of course, in real life, depending upon your usage profile, you might get better success. But uh, generally speaking, I think the MacBook Pros and the Air will generally last you a little bit longer than the Huawei based on my personal experience. Now, lastly, in terms of the value side of things, the MacBook Pro 13.3 inch with the touch bar that we have over here, it retails for around $17.99. The MateBook X Pro is around $12.79 and you're looking at about $11.99 for the MacBook Air uh, based on its retail MSRP. But of course, pricing will always vary depending upon where you are in the world and your time of purchase. Now, the biggest thing we have to address is the Mac OS 10 operating system. When you get a MacBook, that's one of the biggest selling features, the whole reason why it's so popular in the first place. And certainly you're just stuck with Windows when you get the Huawei. I'm sure they would love to run Mac OS 10 and get Apple support, but that's never going to happen. But besides the software side of things, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Windows. In fact, more people uh, think it's the more capable operating system. That's always going to be a personal preference for everyone out there. But from a hardware perspective, as we demonstrated, there's certainly some unique advantages that the Huawei has compared to the current generation MacBooks. And its biggest selling feature definitely has to be that super thin bezel-less display that we have on top. But besides those notions, that's really it. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts and opinions about the Huawei. Which Windows-based PC do you guys think has the most to offer that's currently available right now? Definitely love to hear your recommendations. And besides that, give us a thumbs up and make sure you have notifications turned on so that way you can get our videos once they become available to you. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.